Hi everybody, I'm Lori Locker and I'm on the gallery committee. And what I'm doing here today is introducing our juror, Karen Brody. Karen's a Philly girl. Um, she got her education in the East. She has a BA in French and an MA in linguistics. And about 1969, she came out to California. So she's been here for a long time. And after a career in education and graphic design, she had more time to concentrate on her art. So she took a lot of classes from some of our Santa Barbara adult ed instructors. And in 1999, she started to teach herself. And she taught calligraphy and collage, and now we're kind of into mixed media. And as you know, Karen has a very loyal following around here, and she still teaches in Carpinteria on Thursday afternoons. Karen was one of the founding members of the Carpinteria Valley Art League, which is somewhat still in existence. And out of that league came the original Step One, which eventually morphed into Gallery 855. And now we're changing again, and we're the Carpinteria Art Center. So we just keep moving along. About five years ago, Karen and Boyd moved on down to Fillmore and Karen got more involved with the Ventura County art things and now has a studio at Bell Arts. So when this exhibit came up, Free Spirit, I thought, oh, Karen would be a great juror. And she agreed to come back and today she's going to talk about what she chose to put in our gallery. So, Karen Brody. And go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm glad to be invited to jury a show for you. And for the gallery talk, when I uh, talked it over with Lori, uh, she gave me a long list, actually your daughter did, gave me a long list of dates. And I saw that Bastille Day was on the list. Today is Bastille Day in France. And if... Uh, <laughs> um, and if you uh, recall your history a little bit, you'll know that that uh, day um, the people of France rose up and stormed the Bastille and let out all the prisoners and that eventually led to the French Revolution. And I thought, what a better, what could there, what better day could there be than Bastille Day to have a talk about free spirit, which is the title of your, uh, of your exhibit this month and next. So uh, that's why we're, we're here on Bastille Day. And uh, it is a holiday in France, much like our 4th of July is here. So I think it all kind of goes together. Um, I'm hoping that this group is flexible enough so that we can walk inside the gallery and actually look at the art. It's very difficult for me to talk about specifics and, and have you imagine what's in there. Uh, I'd like to be able to stand there and point to it and look at it and talk about it. And I especially want to talk about those to whom I gave the awards, but I also want to talk about the artwork of any of you who are here today. Um, and your work is included in the show, and so we want to uh, talk about your work as well. Um, the, what, I, um, what I did in during this, and I took way longer than I was supposed to, Jurying is a hard business. I learned uh, by the seat of my pants because when I was first asked to jury a show, it, it, it's very flattering. You say, oh, how nice. Someone wants me to come in and, and select art for their show. This is wonderful. But when you get down to the business of actually doing it, it's, it's a hard thing. And it's difficult because, uh, especially in this show, there was a wide diversity of stuff. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of different directions to the art. And I thought, how am I ever going to make this come together. Um, and then of course there's the, the choices you have to make this but not this. Why do you do that? Is this one better than this one? Is this one just different? So it's a judgment call. And you don't want anyone to feel like they have been rejected. It's that, it's that terrible R word, uh, my work was rejected, and it makes you feel like you are rejected. I like to l use the term not selected. Uh, it's a little, uh, it has not quite as hard an edge to it. And that's all it is. For this particular show, 
your work was not selected. It does not mean your work is terrible. Uh, it means for this particular grouping, it didn't work well in that setting. And that's what always surprises me because at the beginning, I took things out, we put them outside, and I went back to my work. And later on, I ended up bringing a couple things back in because of the way it shaped up. So uh, all, of those, all of those considerations are at play. And uh, no one who enters a show who has courage enough to enter a show, and it does take courage to put your work out there, knowing that somebody like me is going to come in and say, ah, out, out, no, um, and, and still feel good about yourself. <laughs> but it's not, it's not a pronouncement on how bad or good you are as an artist. It's how appropriately you have done your work. It's more about whether you um, exercised imagination, whether you took a little different road, uh, whether you just weren't satisfied with the ordinary, um, how well you interpreted the theme, all of those things uh, play into it. In this little gallery, and I haven't been here for seven years, so it was uh, sort of a sort of a flashback and a wake-up call. But um, like we do when we're kids and we grow up in a certain house in a certain place, and 20 years later we go back, and the first thing we say is, "Oh my gosh, it's so small! I didn't remember it being so small. How did my mother ever manage in this kitchen?" Um, so when I came here, my feeling was, "Ah, oh, it's so small. I don't remember it being so small." And then, of course, it's cut up into rooms. So what I tried to do uh, in here was to make the, the artwork in each room flow into the next one. <coughs> and I started in the back, and I worked forward. And um, first of all, I did, I did select some things that I knew right away um, would work in this particular setting would work for the theme and showed some sort of competence in technique in the art form. And so uh, with that start then I worked at the back and worked my way forward and when we go in I'll point out uh, things like the palette, the style, the, the, the sort of sensibility that, uh, that I put together and as we move forward you'll see how I hope <laughs> that has worked to, to make a complete um, presentation. Um, and I will say one thing that I uh, um, am a little disappointed in, I realize you're having this um, uh, auction of, I love the term, ar arniture, arniture. <laughs> um, but when I was here last, none of that was here. So I'm remembering a a, not a completely different uh, presentation, but something that was different. And in some cases, that has gotten in the way. And I will sort of explain things as we go through. But um, um, when we were working on it, Susan, or Susan, uh, said to me, as she watched me work, she said, oh, it's like you're putting together a collage. <laughs> And it was very much like that. Here are all the pieces. They have to make some sort of composition. The composition it consists of three different rooms and they all have to sort of make an entire uh, presentation that makes sense. So that, that was my goal. And so you can probably maybe appreciate a little bit about the challenge that is. And I commend everybody uh, who brought work who uh, entered the work and whose work hangs on the walls. Uh, I think you did a good job. I think that interpreting the theme was obvious in, in most, if not all, of your work. So um, I hope that it we're not too crowded. If we just would walk in and go to the back and then if everybody can't get into one room at the same time, that's okay. We'll start and then maybe you can just sort of work your way through the rooms and, and then we'll come out back here when we're done. And then if you have questions, uh, you can feel free to ask those questions and I'll <coughs> try my That'll be good. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, this room in general, 
I thought in terms of warm colors, and if you'll notice, uh, most of the artwork uh, is predominantly red or pink uh, or something warm. Uh, so that, that got me started on that. Um, this little corner here is sort of the mystery corner. Yeah. Uh, the, these two pieces uh, have a certain era, era or aura of mystery to them. The masks, this, uh, this little sort of uh, piece that has uh, smoke coming out of it and wafting up. So those two look like they belong together. Uh, I love trying to put pieces together that you wouldn't ordinarily think of as being put together. Um, you concentrate mostly on the palette so that you can put an abstract and a landscape or an abstract and a representational piece together very successfully. If you look at, at the maybe the brush strokes, the palette, the way that it's composed rather than oh it's representational or it's abstract. So these two pieces different in feeling still work together and occupy this nice space. Even the blues here uh, if you want to get really picky about it, uh, there are some cool colors in here that really work together. So these are two very nicely done pieces, uh, framed very nicely. And around this let's do. Okay. Um, here's a great example of a representational and abstract put together. And the reason it works, so look at the line in this, the line in that. And then even the circular forms here are represented over there in a representational piece. And the, the palettes are, uh, are very harmonious together. I think these three look uh, very attractive together, even though they're very different. And they're framed differently. Uh, many times the frames will help you determine, as mundane as that seems, the frames will help you determine what goes together and what doesn't. So uh, sometimes a black frame might uh, weight down, weigh down the, the rest of the arrangement. So you have to be careful about what's going on in the framing as well. But all of this works beautifully together. And right here. I don't know who's this. Is. We could all kind of reach. We could all kind of yeah. go in the same direction. Oh, this is great. Stay where you are. Okay, stay move stay this way. Okay. Well, I'll okay. just kind of turn you clockwise. Okay. We'll all move clockwise. You know, one of the one of the th wonderful things for me in choosing these things is. I had no idea for the most part who the artists were, <laughs> which is what you want in a juror. And those, there were some that I knew I, I couldn't help myself. I just immediately knew who, who they, uh, they were, even without looking for a name. And I don't look for names. I try my best not to look at anybody's name. Now, um, I know Judy, but, <laughs> but I had no idea that was hers until I just looked at the tag. This is extremely clever, uh, this assemblage. <laughs> and uh, what is she calling it? Cool skater. Um, and even though that is radically different from anything around it, it works in that little corner. Uh, the line again uh, and the neutral uh, tones of this uh, are a nice foil against all this color as well. But this is a very clever piece. Uh, an exercise in balance, I have to say. <laughs> and then, um, Thin ice. I don't know this artist, but I thought this was a very nicely, uh, sort of whimsically rendered uh, piece with uh, the the bears, and uh, it uh, it just it just spoke to me as a as a nicely done piece, and it sort of does with its neutrals. It kind of makes this transition around the corner. I don't want to lead you to think that I only chose the pieces because uh, they, they made nice transitions in color or, or worked here, but this one does work here to kind of make this transition. Um, and the idea of the spirit, I think, is evident in all of them. There's a free spirit very definitely going on in this roller skate piece. Uh, there's a lot of spirit in these lines, and then the softness of this. Uh, the, I, I like the, the, either the obvious expression of spirit like this or the softer one like that. Um, and then we come over here, and you'll have to tell me if you're here, if any, this is yours. Um, 
This is a, um, an amazing mixed media piece. Is there resin in this? Or, uh, uh, yes. Um, I use many different things. Do you want to just give us a little well, list of what well, you used? By the way, for the video, we won't hear anybody else talking since you only have the mic. Oh, I'll repeat it. So, okay. Okay, so I, you have resin? And yeah, I have resin. Uh, gesso. Gesso. Um, I've got uh, uh, pieces of metal. Pieces of metal, like here? Yes. Uh, Found object pieces that oh. I found actually as I walk through Carpinteria, I find a lot of these pieces. Carpinteria discovered found yeah. objects yes. right here. Yes. Um, so I just take them out of oblivion and put them into something that uh, maybe I can make interesting. I like that out of oblivion. Yeah. That's not what it's called, is it? No. No. It's okay. Um, now this, I, I can make an example of you because you had two pieces and one of them was a larger one. Yes. I had selected the larger one, not this one. And when all was said and done, yours was one that I went out and traded out. Um, I, this one worked way better. I liked them both, but two large pieces in here were not gonna work, so I had to make a choice. And why did I choose this one? Well, as soon as I put this one up and then looked at these two, you'll see the same colors. Should we rotate a little bit? We shall. <laughs> this is sort of like musical chairs. So this particular piece, I know you didn't see his other one, but this particular piece has these green and red areas that the other one did not. If they were there, they were not as obvious as this one. So when we come over here, we have this. And we have a beautiful transition here. And I love the, the sort of tension between these two. Judy's being, and I have to sell, uh, there are several full disclosure statements I will make throughout. This is one. Uh, Judy has been my friend and my student for many years, so I immediately <laughs> knew that was hers. But this one, uh, and she submitted several, but this is the one that was happy with the others. You know, that plays well with others thing. Well, it, it becomes, there comes a point where you have to consider that. So if I had several choices from Judy, this is the one that made this sort of complete. So that's the selection. It has nothing to do with whether this one was better uh, rendered or the other one was, there's something wrong with it. it, has nothing to do with that. This works and look at how it works with this one. The texture here, then all of a sudden, up a devoid of texture down here, but the color is still there. So this one has the same sort of flow as that one, and it, it uh, echoes a few of the same colorings in the palette, and then this one sort of solidifies the red and the green, the pink and the green that comes from that one. Now, I'm thinking, so this wasn't here before? Was this here? Uh, no. Um, it wasn't. <laughs> 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 the one that was there so Oh, well, and we're going to talk about that when we get out there because now it's great that it's sold and great that this particular coloration is here because then as you see we have some neutrals added in. Uh, this one, uh, this so kind of crazy to me in a good way that I thought that's kind of neat. <laughs> so it has all this sort of uh, spontaneous strokes in it and so does this one but very very different very very different but very very happy together. Um, and so this Zoe good for you is looking great right in here. Um, is, so is Kathy here this is Kathy's, and that is, is that Kathy's too? Yes, that's what it's Amazing, okay. So, um, these two are working well together. Love all the textures. This is kind of like the room with all the, the great textures in it. Uh, and, but then you come here, <laughs> and then this one, uh, to me this was just so interesting, the, the kind of spirit that was going on here. It's sort of Victorian looking and dress, 
but her attitude is totally different. And so I liked her spirit, and that was the one that really spoke to me about some spirit. Unfortunately, she's wearing a red skirt, so she fits right in. Um, so that one, that one looks wonderful there, so we gave that one an honorable mention. And then these three little ones here, um, this is all about, uh, these two have a similarity to them. They are done by the same person, um, watercolor and collage. And uh, this is pretty daring, this frame, but it works. It works with that. And then this one, a sort of a, a lighter palette one down here, both beautiful compositions. And then this, which I wasn't sure about to start with. Uh, it's it's so simple, but it's beautiful in its simplicity, and it's circular, which gives you that sort of uh, wholeness, that feeling that everything's uh, centered, and so it starts with this really dark value and goes out and becomes light, or maybe uh, he did it the other way, I'm not sure. but. A wonderful grouping here in the area of pink. <laughs> so all in all, uh, this whole room, and we'll talk about uh, the assemblage before we go, this whole room is sort of in that area of the warm color in its complement, the red, the pink, and the green. This one, uh, what was here? Do you remember what was here? Okay. This one, um, uh, this is what I do, uh, assemblage. So for me to choose, if I chose one of your assemblages, that's kind of high level because I'm a little picky about that. But this, uh, uh, Kathy has accomplished the free spirit flow in materials that, that are rigid. And I think that was a wonderful accomplishment on her part. It has a beautiful flow to it, but each of the parts uh, are hard, wooden, rigid pieces. So that was a nice accomplishment. Love this little thing in here. Great uh, contrast among the elements. And uh, then the forks here give it sort of a, a lift. Uh, um, you get the feeling of uh, it's going to take off. It has that spirit to it. So I think she did an excellent job. And that's why I gave that one an award. Okay, moving this way. <laughs> oh, it's cooler out here. If you're not uh, standing exactly where you can see it right now, you can listen to what I have to say. And then before you leave, you can circle around and take a little look. That's at least better than me standing outside and talking about what's inside. Um, these two pieces, I just sort of viewed as a set. They're, they're not... No, they're not the same artist, but this one was so literally uh, the spirit of the 4th of July or the patriotic spirit of the U.S. There was no mistaking that. I thought it was very clever the way it was done. This one is just some spontaneous, joyous expression, very different from that. This one is all carefully laid out, lots of space around it. This one is just so spontaneous, it just sort of happened to get on the canvas like that. So I thought the combination in their differences was a great thing to do. And I like them tucked into this little corner here. And then too, I was not going to go around looking for red, white, and blue to put together. I didn't think that was very good. So these kind of occupy a little special alcove. And then, okay, oh, Betty, is where's Betty? I, can I take your, yes I can. <laughs> Now, this is why I get so bugged about extraneous stuff. <laughs> it's almost, not to overstate, but it's almost as if you've done a work of art and somebody came in and said, oh, let me, let me add that, and <laughs> let me put that over there, and here, that's much better. <laughs> there is a reason why I had this here on that pedestal under here, and so you can probably see why. 
This is Betty's. Betty is a minimalist. And another full disclosure moment, Betty has been my student for uh, many years. And she, there's a little cobweb. I'm going to remove that. <laughs> oh, did you get a picture of Betty? Oh, good. <laughs> And um, Betty likes to see if she can make fabulous assemblages out of a few pieces. And she continues to be successful in doing that. When I looked at this one, which is made out of piano innards uh, and a wonderful piece of wood, um, I put it here. And I'm going to leave it here for now and then we'll fix it later. But I put it here with this one. And they, even though they're completely different uh, mediums, they have that shape and that sort of spirit, uh, that feeling that they're blooming in some way. And uh, these two seem to work really well together. So they're meant to be together. And then uh, we move on to this one, which uh, is just an exuberant expression of line and texture and color and that needed to occupy a fairly big space and I thought it kind of anchored this particular little room. Actually it doesn't look bad with this lamp. Not <laughs> over here. <laughs> Move that over there. <laughs> um, so the the color and the texture is just that's just sort of uh, wild in a very spirited and attractive way, that one. And it's square. There's always something uh, very pleasant about a square composition. Okay, and then moving well, in the... Why don't we go counterclockwise? Everybody just a step, a step or two. You thought you were just going to video. You didn't think you were going to give stage direction and stuff, right? So then no <laughs> in this corner we moved over to sort of uh, nature, the landscape, the seascape, uh, more of a of not totally representational work, but uh, work that references things that you can recognize. And all of these are sort of outdoor nature things. The, the, the snow here and the, cloud, the, cloud, uh, the clouds in the sky, and then this uh, monoprint, which to me has a great relationship to that one. I think it's the lines, different sorts of lines, but lines nonetheless. These two seem to anchor each other really well as far as the ocean goes. So all of these have uh, uh, cool palettes for the most part. And they're all about uh, organic shapes in nature. And they seem to work well together. I was glad that I had so many different mediums to choose from. I like a show that has a lot of different expressions. So contrary to if you've heard, uh, a lot of people ask, um, who, who is the juror going to be? And then you figure out, oh, he's an oil painter. Oh, he's, she's a watercolorist. And, uh, don't let that mislead you. Uh, just because I do collage and expedient assemblage doesn't mean I'm going to be in here looking for only those things. I, li I pride myself on the fact that um, I pick a diverse uh, expression because I think it makes a good show. And these, these are diverse, but they uh, have uh, um, a commonality in, in, the, uh, in nature and the way it's expressed here. So I thought that made a nice little corner there. And look, we have seashells. OK. Uh, <laughs> this, little, this little area is the one that if I could redo it right now in front of your faces, I would. <laughs> um, uh, down here on this beautiful table, I had two of Zoe's bowls, which have sold. They were not unlike this one, right? In style? The ruffly Yeah, they were ruffly, yeah, but they, they were, were dark. Yes. Oh, okay. That was important that they were dark. <laughs> so we didn't have the Van Gogh, <laughs> and we didn't have those. And it was very simple. We had this piece here which to me is reminiscent of kind of an ocean wave. And we had Zoe's ruffles, uh, two of them, but dark. And then above, we had uh, these three. And uh, remind me, OK. Um, 
mixed media pieces, all of them, but look at how well they work together. This one very different from those two, but they, I thought they look fabulous together. And I thought this corner looked even more fabulous with those bowls and that one, <laughs> <laughs> that one uh, ceramic piece. Uh, the shapes all work together. The color in that ceramic is in Martin's pieces. Uh, and anyway, imagine that. Imagine what. <laughs> it was very beautiful. And now uh, we're at full disclosure time again. Um, Martin Fowler's pieces here. Martin uh, has been in my class. Uh, without going into too much detail, I'll just say because of a challenge his wife uh, offered him <laughs> to uh, venture into the abstract. And this past term, he has done some things that I think are especially outstanding. And they, they are outstanding uh, for several reasons. One, they're a different approach. I, I like uh, some, some pieces that say, I'm not doing the same old thing. I'm going to try this, that. I'm going to be adventuresome. I'm going to do what I want to do. And in addition to that, I got to watch him work on these. And I watched him get more and more enthused over this body of work. And there are more. This is just two of how many? Many? Ten? And I thought that he was really on to something different. And not only that, he was so enthused about it. It was his expression. And I just loved the attitude that he took in making his art. It was exemplary. So I had to recognize that in some way, Martin. And I especially liked this, the lower one here. This is the one that um, I gave an honorable mention to. So good work. It's really interesting for me as an instructor to see them on the wall after having seen him week after week show up and work on these. Okay, and then this wall. Yeah, well, and there. So going back to this wall over here, and here we had a lot of red. So in order to, uh, the challenge here is not to make it look like you've got uh, one, two, three, four, five little distinct galleries. You want the thing to flow. In fact, someone, it was, it was Ginger, whom I saw a couple weeks after we installed all this, and she said, oh, it just flows. <laughs> And I said, oh, thank goodness, because that was my goal, to do that. So we take some of the warm red that's over here, and we bring it in here. Well, this red happens to be in with a lot of black. And uh, I'll start with Troy's in the center, although I, where are you? I, I, did, I didn't know this was hers. That I had no idea whose any of these were. I did not know this was hers. This, to me, when I first saw it, I thought, spirit. What, what spirit? And then when I realized what it was about, uh, then I, uh, I thought, this is, this is a great statement. It's a daring statement. And you can also read it as an absence of spirit. Someone who is imprisoned in this. But if you know the story, do you want to mention what the story is? Go ahead, please. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Um, well, um Malala, who's on uh, the cover of Time magazine, um, when she was about 11, she started putting out a blog in her native Pakistan uh, writing about wanting education for girls. Um, by the time they can't hear me. Karen, can you stand next to her? Sure. She's oh. on your mic. Yeah. Talk into my mic. Yeah, well, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> You want me to start over? Or? No, no. Okay. So, um, by the time she was 14, which is why the piece is called 14, she had been targeted by the Taliban uh, as a person that they were seriously against. And when she was just past 14, 15, they came onto her school bus and asked which of the girls was her. And if they didn't say who was her, they were going to shoot all the girls. And this little girl was brave enough to stand up and say, it's me. And they shot her there. 
I don't know if you know, but Friday was uh, Malala Yousafi Day, um, according to the United Nations. She was speaking before the UN. She is a shortlist mm -hmm. now to be uh, on the Nobel Peace Prize. So for me, when I saw this show coming together, I I'd been wanting to do something about her. I didn't know what. Um, and then I remembered that I had the Time magazine with her on the cover. And then it was what to do with it. But then I got thinking about, and I'd read something about, until you can really look into another's eyes and see yourself reflected there, to, then you can, that's what you really need in order to, to see another person as a real person, not as a lesser being. So that's when I went with the figure with the mirror behind the eyes. And, and, what's the and for all of you that are tall enough to look yes. slippery. There's a mirror right there. And it is very timely because she just did appear right. at the UN. Right. And I, it's hard to believe that she is as young yeah, as she is. Now. Yeah, amazing. So uh, to me, what a reflection of spirit in that piece, even though it is so dark. But the spirit is definitely there. So. And so that ended up as the centerpiece here, and then on either side, uh, an abstract that expresses a different kind of a spontaneous spirit, sort of like that figurative work in the corner back there. Uh, and then anchoring it on the other side, the horse, and I thought the look on the horse's face was incredible. And there's a the tousled mane and everything. There's a certain uh, animal spirit to that, even though it's it, he's standing still. So I and uh, even something as little and this is going to be really nitpicky, but the fact that the horse is facing this way makes a difference. You wouldn't want to hang it over there because then he's looking into the corner. <laughs> so you want this to come together this way. And then from there on, it was a question of uh, putting some pieces that I had already selected just because I felt they had merit. And then uh, filling out this section. So you'll notice the little piece here. Um, and this one here, both have little shades of blue in them, very different pieces. And then the uh, three-dimensional piece here has sort of, it really has the same kind of spirit as this one above it. It has that free form kind of spontaneous look to it. And so this made um, a nice grouping here. The one with the orange provided a little zing because you don't want this to get too dark and too heavy but it still has the dark values in it so I thought um, this is uh, aside from the way that was <laughs> this one is my favorite wall <laughs> I shouldn't have favorites but this one this one came together very easily others I had to work on a little more over here, to finish up this room, uh, this is sort of the neutral tone wall. <laughs> so if you come around from this way, you already have black. So there's some black and there's some brown, and then we end up with a few oranges here, which then transition over there. So um, uh, on this edge, we have two very neutral pieces uh, that work well together. They're very si uh, similar in their composition, even though they're different mediums. Uh, and uh, Melissa's below, I think it's amazing uh, the values, uh, value contrast she was able to accomplish out of coffee filters. So, um, wow. Wow. yeah, for you. <laughs> And I just, I just love those two together. I love the curved nature of that, which brings us over to David Holt's photograph and this long saxophonist in here. I thought had a sort of kind of a spirit. He's all alone. He's uh, probably enjoying his own music. Maybe there are other people off to the sides. We don't know that. But just the, the sort of isolation and playing for maybe just himself and, and uh, the spirit he has to just enjoy that music for himself, making music maybe if no one else heard it. And then over here, um, we have uh, two, 
which then introduce the the more uh, warmer the warmer colors, but still have little touches of black. And um, you know what, Eleanor, I this is the first time I knew that was yours. <laughs> so good, uh, nicely done. And then the little black bird down here kind of anchors things here. So that's the neutral wall. Any questions so far? Aside from the fact I'm a little, you know, compulsive obsessive about this. Oh, these two, these two I had to have kind of a separate place for because I couldn't make them work really, but I loved them together. And I love the fact that they were portraits. These are Munins. Um, oh, these are Elizabeth's. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love the fact that they also were the complementary colors. And uh, so I chose to hang them. Uh, not, not. There's nothing uh, bad to be said about next to the heater, uh, but I thought they needed a little alcove of their own, and they look wonderful together. And I see a red dot. Yeah. <laughs> Good for. Good for you. Excellent. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay then, this, um, this room here is, is uh, sort of devoted to blue <laughs> and, um, and it has uh, more of the sort of ocean-y kinds of things that you associate maybe with Carpinteria. So, and this one was the one that was in the advertisements, yes. as I recall. But what a wonderful spirit of relaxation <laughs> is in this one. And then to me, this one really worked well with that same flow. In fact, if you look at all of these, they have a flow to them that takes you from one to the next. And when I left, I told the persons who were doing the hanging that they could hang mine any place they wanted to hang it. So this one is mine, and I'm so happy that it's in with the rest because it works with the rest. And uh, mine is about the Beach Boys. That is, a, is an homage to the Beach Boys uh, of their 50th, uh, 50th? Yeah, 50th year anniversary of, of uh, and of course it, it so connects with the surfing culture, which is here. And, but I just loved all of the ways that these things uh, <coughs> just flowed, literally flowed together. Uh, and then this one's yours, right? Yes. And uh, so shall I tell tales on you that this is the first piece you've gotten into a show, is that correct? Very, Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> but there's not only this ocean flow and sky, but the, the flow of the figure in the bird, which is a nice, just a very gentle sort of presence there in that one. Uh, so this whole thing, to me, works together. And then over here, this is a great example of a representational piece, even though it is abstract dead. And a, completely abstract, you know, the difference, right? This one doesn't really refer to anything. This is all about color and texture and maybe a little shape. This one has well-defined shapes to it and you read it immediately as a landscape. But look how beautifully it works with what's above. There, It's a great pairing. And a large part of what makes that work is the palette, the color. Um, but this one not spelled out, this one definitely all spelled out. So wonderful together. Sometimes in our work, as well as in our shows, there has to be a little tension that happens in what we put together. And that's what's going on here. You know, I'll usher you to the door. <laughs> Let's see. We're going to end up with the first prize winner. Mm -hmm. so, Go ahead. This is part of the of the uh, exhibit as well, and you will see that. And all of this, I hate to keep bringing this up, but all of this was not here. Uh, <laughs> but this piece, if you you can tell, sort of uh, echoes the same sort of flowing characteristic as what we have in the two dimensional stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the little corner. Oh, another red dot. This is great. <laughs> um, these both by the same artist. I love the difference in scale. They work well together. 
And this little piece in the corner, I wasn't sure if I was going to include or not. But as soon as I saw it in proximity to these, mm -hmm. that was it. It works together. And then down here, we have uh, two more that sort of fill out that wonderful, uh, spontaneous line. It's all about line and shape on these three. And they work together so well color-wise. So I thought, and also we wanted to hang this one next to the door in case it would catch some breeze mm -hmm. and sort of, you know, exhibit itself in that way. These are, these are pieces from the, the kids. So that's, that's not part of what um, I dealt with. But this piece here, um, it was here, was in this location when I came in. Uh, it's just uh, a beautiful, exuberant uh, piece rendered uh, in bas-relief, totally white. Uh, even I like this part that the edge is not squared up. These things sort of go off the edge in their exuberance. <laughs> and the whole spirit of this, this figure, this woman, to me exemplified the spirit I think you were trying to capture in the show. So uh, I knew right away that this was, this was the winner. Wow. What is the material? Um, cast jesmonite, which I don't know what any, I don't know. We'll all have to go home and Google. Jay? It's the same Jay. one as the lady in the red skirt. Mm -hmm. That's um. what blew me away. Uh, one time in this very gallery, um, I'm really the artist. Ken Mack, the late Ken Mack, gave me two awards, one for a sort of life-size three-dimensional piece and one for two-dimensional, one honorable mention and one first. And I'm going to assume that he did not know it was the same artist. And so when I realized that I had done the same thing, I thought, well, how wonderful is that? Because so many times you hear that artists are supposed to develop a style, a method of doing things, and, they, and we get known by that. But how wonderful it is to excel and do things in, in different mediums, in different styles, in different ways. And when I discovered, and in fact I didn't know it was even better, and I like to think that Ken Mack didn't know it either. Uh, so I think that's quite an accomplishment for the artist to render this as well as the Victorian lady in the red skirt <laughs> um, and do them both so well that I felt that they deserve mention. Both? Yeah. And go ahead. Okay. Uh, so in, in, in summation, I think that uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful show, content-wise, uh, expression-wise, as far as the uh, theme goes. I think everyone did a, a, an outstanding job, and uh, I was pleased to be able to so select the pieces. I'm hoping that uh, from what we saw in there, and thank you for... Um, uh, putting up with going around and being a little warm in there, but I think you can see that now having seen the art in its, in its habitat there uh, and its relationship, each piece to the next is important. And I think that, that, uh, that uh, I'm very pleased with the way this has come together for that reason. And it was indeed, like Susan said, like putting a collage together. And uh, I enjoyed it, and uh, I commend you on the quality of the show, and hope there are many more to come. So thank you.